So that's Miss Lydia. Herself, Michael. But she used to have freckles. Oh, she did. Then the age of miracles is back. It was never gone, sir. It's astonishing the way people change when they grow up. Oh, don't be impatient, Michael. You shall meet her just as soon as I've presented you to Mrs. McMillan. I don't care to be presented to Mrs. McMillan. I have nothing in common with these people. I've got other plans for us, Father. I want you to resign. You've worked long enough. I know I don't make much money at the laboratory, but it'll be enough for both of us if, if you do the marketing. Are you offering me another position, sir? I'm very serious. Oh, so am I. I have been a father but once, Michael. But I've been the butler in this house for 40 years, and I leave it to you which is the stronger habit. I should unconsciously be your butler always, and your father but rarely. And I should have to whistle for me wages to boot. <laughs> now, honestly, Michael, you don't need a father, and you can't afford a butler. Get up. I don't set foot in this house again, so help me if I live to be a million. Never again, Mrs. McMillan. Never again. And I see that you don't change your mind, you fake spawbones. You're as healthy as a bartender, madam, but you're spoiled, self-indulgent. Get out, cats off, you landlubber, or I'll pole like show. Claims he's a doctor. Up no his elbow from a barrel of rum. Clear out, you castaway. Medical man, mutton head. <sighs> the nerve of him. Telling me my liver is perfect. I ought to run him out of Boston. <laughs> well, now, young lady, what were you trying to tell me? Wait. Were you trying to tell me that that shameful thing you have on is a dress? Oh, why, well, you look as though you were ready for the bathtub. Upstairs with you. Put something on. You're too old a girl to parade around in the nude. I'm not nude, Granny. Don't argue with me, you Jezebel. I say you are nude. Look at those shoulders. What's wrong with them? They're naked. Oh! You hussy. They're as naked as an eel's belly. There's nothing wrong with showing your shoulders. Everyone does if they're pretty. Then yours are ravishing, I suppose. I'm not ashamed of them. How dare you talk back to me like that? Come here. Lydia, you little baggage. You'll wear a decent law-abiding gown and you'll go to bed. I'll wear what I want. Lydia, come here. I'm no baby and you can't treat me like one. I'm old enough to show my shoulders and if I can't wear what other girls wear, I'll not go to the ball. I'll go to bed and stay there and never get up. Just lie there and die. Kill my nasty, cruel grandmother. You little idiot. If you start <laughs> crying, I'll brain you. Don't flatter yourself. Nobody's going to cry. <laughs> Who are you? May I, may I be permitted, madam, to present my son, Dr. Michael Fitzpatrick. He's just come to Boston from New York. A doctor, eh? Get rid of one quack and another descends on me. You're charlatans, all of you. I've spent 37 years of my life and a fortune in money on you miserable sawbones, trying to get a little relief for my liver. I haven't slept a wink in three decades on account of that unhappy organ. <gasps> oh, there it is. May I see your tongue, ma'am? Oh, what for? Please. I may be able to tell something while you're having your seizure. A lot of good that'll do. Ah? Uh... Uh, see anything? Please relax. Hmm. Very obvious. What is? Gastrocolitis acute. I have that? Definitely. You may not like what I'm going to prescribe, ma'am. It's a charcoal <clears throat> compound. I want you to take it three times a day. Prescribe away, young man. First medical I've met who makes sense. Gastrocolitis, eh? Acute, ma'am. Acute? Oh. oh, I know where I got it to see. Well, of tons of seawater in my youth. Ate out my liver. I always knew it. That's what killed Captain McMillan, my husband. They said it was an old bullet in the leg, but the McMillans don't die of old bullets. The seawater did it. Uh, I die like he did. Killed with the sea. It's the only way a McMillan ever dies. No. That's Lydia. Lydia! Yeah. I want you to meet our new family physician. Mi What's the name again? Uh, Michael Fitzpatrick, ma'am. Oh, yes. James's son. As fine a father as a man ever had. I only hope you've inherited his genius. Doctor. James, I want something to eat. I have the tea ready, ma'am. Tea? Hate tea. With a chaser of grog, ma'am. Ah, that's better. Uh... Well, Granny, what about my dress? May I go to the ball or do I go to bed? If anybody goes to bed around here, it's me. Go on, go to the ball if you want to in that mermaid suit. You wouldn't have dared wear it in my youth. 
men have changed. Their blood is cooled. Once aboard the lugger and the girl is mine. You don't hear that anymore. <laughs> Let me have that prescription, Doctor. I'll have it filled at once. Well, come on, come on. Hmm? This way. I want some of that patty that gave me a pain yesterday. I feel so much better today. I don't think it's doing any harm. <sighs> Golly, she had me upset a while. The old pirate. That's all she is. Nothing but a silly old pirate. I hope you gave her some awful medicine. I love her. I really do. She's my ideal. Dr. Fitzpatrick. Uh, yes, Miss Lydia. Do you think ten dollars is a lot of money? Well, I, I... Do you like my dress? I've been admiring it. How many yards of chiffon do you think went into uh, it? Just try and guess. Miles. Do you dance? Yes. Oh, what a pity. I'm sorry. Not at all. Doctors seldom do, do they? Never, do you? Do I what? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, golly, I almost forgot your ticket. What ticket? To the ball. You must come even if you can't dance. You don't disapprove of dancing, do you? Doctors disapprove of everything. But then you don't look like a doctor. Oh, <laughs> I mean, you don't look like old Dr. Whitridge. You're going to have a glorious time. You'll be in all the papers and the society columns. Here's your ticket. Ten dollars, please. Ten dollars? Mm -hmm. For the ticket. Oh. <laughs> of course. How stupid of me. Two. Two. Four. Four. Nine. Golly, but you have a lot of money, haven't you? Pockets full. Ten. Thank you. Would you care to walk in the garden? I'd love it. Oh, no, you must be dying of hunger. I'm such a fool. Do stay and have a cup of tea with us. And some grog. You love Granny's grog. Granny! Dr. Fitzpatrick is staying for tea. For me, it was love at first sight. It was not for me. <laughs> I'm afraid it was only the Macmillan avarice and cunning. You see, there was a prize offered for the girl who sold the most tickets. I still had one left when I met you. Lydia! <laughs> <laughs> I never forgot that ball. Yes. Do you remember the ballroom? Yes. We don't have ballrooms like that anymore. My breath stopped when I went in. You're quite right, Bob. I've seen a great many ballrooms since. Very nice one. But none as wonderful as that one. I entered the room as one enters in a dream, walking on air. Do you remember the graceful way people walked on those mirror-like floors? Thousands of mirrors on the walls. <laughs> hanging from the ceiling like enormous magnolias. Do you remember the hundreds of harps? The divine aggregation of musicians. Hundreds of them, I think. I often wonder what became of those melting violins and the wonderful room full of Prince Charming. for a waltz. It was like dancing on a cloud. Do you remember it, Michael? Yes, I remember it, but 